Hi, in this video, I'm going to be sharing with you 10 online business tools that are free to use. I'm Vince from Digital Nomad Institute, and let's get started. All right, so the very first software I'd like to introduce that's free to use is OBS Studios. I have a lot of questions regarding uh, how do you record your, your computer screen for free. And when I first started out, I used OBS Studio. Now, I've since graduated to other paid software, but when you're first starting off and you know you're kind of broke or you're not sure how much to invest, free doesn't you know doesn't hurt. Uh, the only thing I would say that's probably, I, I mean, it's pretty bad manners to complain about free software, but I would say this this learning curve for OBS Studio is a little steep, but it does its job, all right. And it's cross-platform. It works for Mac, Windows, and Linux. Um, you, you can do multiple things with it, and you don't have to pay a monthly fee. So OBS Studio, for those of you who want to do screen recording. All right, the next software I'd like to talk to you about would be OpenShot. Now, once you record your screen and you have a video, um, you're going to need a way to edit that video. And you could do that with OpenShot. Now, it's not going to be a replacement for uh, a full paid software, but if you need something basic, like you need to cut or trim out a certain sections of the video, you want to do maybe a bobblehead, uh, you want to do some really basic, um, you know, transition um, animation between one video to another, it does the job. It's free to use, it's basic. And there's no monthly fee. So uh, when you're first starting off and learning just basic video editor, I think, you know, pay, paid tools are kind of like a overkill, right? You might not need it. And if it's just basic video editing, then open shot might be the way to go for you. So you should go ahead and check that out. It's a free video editor. All right, the next software I'd like to introduce to you is called LibreOffice. And this is a great alternative to anyone who wants to you who doesn't want to pay for Microsoft Office. All right, it has a lot of very powerful features that you can use. Um, it's pretty much like Word if you look at it. All right, so it has this very, very same layout. I'm actually quite surprised that they're able to copy other word processors. Um, it looks very, very similar. So if you use other word processors, this is very, very similar and the learning curve will be very short. Uh, you can choose your different fonts. You can, you know, you basically do almost the same, same thing as Microsoft um, Office, right? Uh, <clears throat> now granted, it, it does have limits though. It's uh, the, the PowerPoint clone isn't as, it might not be as strong, but the word processor itself is pretty, pretty decent. All right, so for those of you who don't want to shell out a whole bunch of money for a uh, word processor, you might want to check out LibreOffice. All right, the next uh, in, next software I'd like to talk to you about is Inkscape. Now, this is a great alternative to those who uh, don't want to uh, spend a lot of money on any any kind of image editing software. And I've used this in the past with great success. I really, really like Inkscape. The only downside I have to say is it takes quite some time to get used to. It's not intuitive as, you know, some of the other tools, but it allows you to create a vector, a vector, use vectors to create images. And there's a lot of great tutorials. For me, I had to personally uh, take an extra course on Udemy <laughs> to learn how to use the software. And it was really in a pinch. I, I had to kind of draw an image using a, now trace an image using a vector software, and I didn't want to shell out the money uh, to to or be be tied to a monthly fee. So I use this, and it, it does it does a great job. Uh, from there, I, I created logos in the pitch. You, you can create so many different things. You can gaming animation, great gaming sprites. So just because it's free, don't think that it's it's you know the free and open source. Don't think that it's it doesn't have any value. It does. It has has a lot of uh, utility in it. So please, if you're into um, any kind of image editing or vector graphics, then check out Inkscape. Look, 
um, it doesn't really hurt anything, right? If you if it works for you, you just save a ton of money. And if it doesn't, oh, just uninstall it. It didn't cost you anything. You just maybe lost a, a few minutes of your time trying it out. So go ahead and check out Enscape. All right, the next software I'd like to introduce you about is SoundCloud, and it's a great alternative to Spotify. Um, for those of you who don't want to, you know, listen to ads on Spotify or don't want to play for Spotify Premium, uh, SoundCloud is a great alternative to that. Uh, there is some restrictions. I, I personally like it because it introduces me to a lot of indie um, musicians, so independent musicians and artists and professionals. So, you know, I mean, I, I have this theory that independent artists and professionals, they, they, uh, I think they try harder and their, their work is a lot better than professionals in some cases because a lot of the professional, like like uh, mainstream singers and and um, mainstream main, mainstream singers, they they they've made it and you know once they made it, the music they get kind of lazy and the music kind of uh, doesn't sound as great. But SoundCloud is basically a independent music or independent artist version of uh, Spotify. So for those of you who want to try something different or be exposed to different types of music or different artists, I'd highly recommend uh, checking out SoundCloud. It's, it's free to use. Now they, ha they do have an upgraded like uh tier, but you can completely use it for free and no, no, no issues right there. Okay. And uh, the next software I'd like to introduce to you is Audacity. Now Audacity is a sound editor. It's an open source sound editor that you can run on uh, Windows, uh, Mac, or Linux. And it does a great job of clearing up your audio files. Uh, I, uh, but this one, it's not quite intuitive. Like when you install it, you don't really know what exactly to do. But look, there's plenty of tutorials in YouTube which help you get started. And then after that, I used uh, Udemy as well to help me kind of like increase my training and take it to the next level. So this really helps helps you out if you're using podcast or maybe you have to do some kind of uh, voiceover or maybe some kind of sound effects. Right? If you're creating sound effects, those are the issues, those are the cases where I, I've used audacity. Is it like professional level, professional grade? Um, is it as good as professional grade sound editing software? Probably not, but is it uh, decent and does it, you know, does it work in a pinch and does it help you create decent sound files? And I say yes, right? If you want, once you, your skill level uh, becomes good enough, you, you can, you can do quite a bit with audacity. So if you're into sound files and you need to do a lot of different uh, editing when it comes to sound and music, then please check out audacity. All right, the next software I'd like to introduce to you uh, is tin eye. Now, what is this you're wondering? It's basically a image search engine. So what you would do is you would upload your image onto the tin eye and it would go ahead and find a match and show you where the source of that image is. Now, why would you want to do this? Well, you can use it for several reasons. One is if you're using any kind of image within your video or blog and you want to know if it's um, kind of copyright free or you paid for original work. Let's say you, you had this artist from Fiverr draw you a logo and you want to make sure that it's original and not, uh, you know, kind of copied from someone, you can run it through tin eye and it will bring up the results and see and show you if it's copied or not, uh, whether it's an original work or art or whether it's copied. And if it's copied, it'll show you where the sources are from. So it's very, very useful for that. And you know, other ways you could use it. You can also use it to maybe do some kind of investigation. So if you want to know where this person, uh, it, it works with people too. So you might want to kind of uh, use, you can use it for people or pets and, and it'll pull up, you know, all related articles <laughs> to that image. All right. So it's very, very useful. You want to go ahead and, and check out Tin Eye. Uh, I use it quite often, uh, quite often and I, than I expect. All right, so that's 10i, image search engine. Software after that is Hemingway Editor. Now, this is basically a writing app that helps you to uh, make your, your sentences and your paragraph uh, more easier to understand, and it gives it a grade. 
So if you were to enter in your text right here, it would go ahead and tell you how readability, what readability level it is, whether it's grade six or higher, how many words you have, um, what sentence may need to be restructured, uh, what sentence is very hard to read, you know, how maybe what what uh, phrase you need to maybe simplify or use an alternative to, and then. As you go through several iterations or several drafts of this, your writing would become much more clear. So the best way I would like to think of maybe Hemingway editor is kind of like a Grammarly light. Um, it will sh Grammarly does everything like this, but it doesn't really, it, it also gives you like, when, if you go premium, it also detects plagiarism and it also gives you suggestions. This doesn't, it just gives you like a warning signal and you kind of have to, it's up to you to, uh, rewrite it yourself and then check to see if it's readable. But for someone who doesn't need something like Grammarly, um, then this is a great alternative. I've used this before. I, I even use this when I still have Grammarly Premium as it really helps me out. Uh, so you want to go check it out. If you, if you do a lot of writing, a lot of blog posts, or you just want to check your academic writing to see how well it works or how well it reads, well, then go ahead and check out Hemingway Editor. It's free to use and it, you know, it, uh, doesn't cost anything. And then uh, the next software after that is called Joplin. So it's a open source note-taking and to-do application that it has uh, where you can sync across uh, different, different platforms, whether it's mobile or uh, you can sync with your PC. I like it because, you know, not all the time. I think a lot of my writing is not, not really in a word processor. I don't really need a word processor. I just need something to jot down like a shopping list or maybe some random idea that I have, or maybe, um, you know, some kind of thing I need to edit within a project, then this is great for those kind of thoughts and ideas and to-do lists that you have to do as it syncs between multiple platforms. Um, and it's not a full blown word processor. Plus the interface is quite, this is actually quite easy to use and it looks, uh, it looks pretty decent. It looks very clean. So that's Joplin. And then finally, the last software I like to introduce you to is called uh, Activity Watch, right? And Activity Watch is basically a kind of like a, a time management productivity, um, kind of like a time log activity uh, software. So what it does is it tracks what you do with on your computer, and it logs everything that you do, right? And uh, it's a uh, free and open source software. It's great for those professionals who are freelancers and those who have to kind of have trouble focusing, or maybe you can uh, use it to, to check to see if your kids are studying, <laughs> you know, install it on their computer and, and so you can maybe see YouTube for five hours and homework one hour or whatever. But, uh, this is also great for, you know, productivity tool. I, I use this, to, um, in the early heydays when I had problems focusing and doing certain tasks, especially when you're working online away from home or as a freelancer by yourself, this really helps you to kind of, uh, kind of sit down, bite down and, and focus on what needs to be done first. And, uh, the, the free, the free features, you know, the, it has a uh, plenty to use. So you, you don't really need to upgrade. It's not a fake free, what I call like fake free. Um, and then the paid features have decent, decent features as well. So, uh, those are the 10 softwares that I would like to do, introduce for any online business, uh, that needed a special tool and don't want to pay for it. It's all free to use and it doesn't really hurt to check them out. So please, uh, before you rush to spend your money on a software online, because money. Uh, for some people, I, I understand it might be hard to come by. Why don't you just try these free tools and uh, check them out for yourself? I'm Vince from Digital Man Institute. Thank you so much for watching. And if this video helped you out, please hit the like button. And I'll see you in the next video.